Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on planet Earth. My name is Jade, this is How to App on iOS, and it's Sunday here in Australia. It's Saturday for the rest of you living in the past. We have a fantastic artist on today, somebody I've been waiting a long time. The time has been killing time. And we are going to kick off today with a track from his brand new album. This is Glenn Clark's Bruised.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Hope you are all doing well. So my name is Jade. This is How to App on iOS. If you are watching over on Facebook, welcome along. You can come and join us over here on YouTube if you like as well and join the chat. Or you can leave a comment and we'll see it here as well. Uh, you can also catch this show daily right now on our website at howtoapponiOS.com. It streams there as well. So I'm super excited today to have this amazing artist on the show. Been wanting him on the show for the longest time but it all just synchronously worked out that uh, his album is released around the time that it was right for him to come on and he had time so here we are so this is a person who I've known for well over a year now and um, I was really inspired by the way he makes music and his video clips just a, an extremely creative mind he's He's, the way he makes music and the way his thought process goes into creating music is really inspiring to me. It's, and it's inspired a lot of the stuff I'm working on now. So um, thank you for that. So without further ado, I shall welcome to the chat the amazing, all the way from New Zealand too, Glenn Clark. Glenn, welcome to the show. How are you today? You have to unmute, mate. <laughs> <laughs> there we go Yay! how's that hey we're working no, it's the, the traditional unmute you're always on mute <laughs> i'm a mute all the time how are you going going well i'm doing really well i've got a weird echo thing going on here i don't know if anyone else has that but uh, uh are you do you, is it coming through your speakers yeah it could be to do with that maybe headphones in yeah headphones in we'll try that yeah <laughs> we love technical issues on this show oh, that's what's all issues. make you know what as we always say on this show mistakes make you better mistakes make good um but good tv yeah well it's it's all coming out good on the stream so that's a good thing let's see if how are you now I'm good now. Hopefully that's yes, we fixed it. No, I've yeah, I've, I've still got a weird echo thing going on, which is really bizarre. Hmm. I don't. That shouldn't be. Uh, that shouldn't be happening for you. I don't know why that's coming through on your end. It shouldn't be. I don't think it is through the stream. It's not on mine. It's got a. No, that's that's really strange. I've just swapped microphones over as well, just to see where that um, happens. And it's still there? Yeah, it's still there. I'll, I'll work with it. and <laughs> It may just be a delay when you ask your question. All right. Well, so this, everyone says the stream's okay. So that's all good. Sounds good on stream. Sounds, I don't have any here because normally if I press this button, then we get us an echo. But I'll turn that off. Um, let's hope it pans its way out. So apart from that, how are you? <laughs> Do we... I'm great. Um, I've just come from... Uh, the uh, live premiere of um, of my album release, and I was just blown away by the number of people that uh, that that turned up and 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 said good day. It was fantastic. So yeah, really, really, really awesome. So yeah, it was good fun. Well done. Congratulations on that. Congratulations on the new album. Um, so what I want to ask you straight up before we get into the serious hard hitting questions, and I'll say hello to everybody in the chat. That video clip we just watched. How the hell did you do that? <laughs> um, it was a um, an idea I had had one day, just um, basically to uh, create um, this backwards video. I, I'd seen someone putting some makeup on once uh, on a YouTube clip, and, and she'd reverse the video, so it was kind of like. Um, um, sorry, I'm taking my headphones off. The, the echo is really bad. Um, so um, basically, I, I just had the idea to um, to create a reverse video, and of course, I didn't have a song for it. I just knew that I wanted to do a video that was in reverse. Uh, so I started with um, a um, just that concept and worked backwards from there, literally. So yeah. <laughs> um, went to um, then write a song um, and that's where Bruised sort of came into it. Um, I started with uh, the little riff which just repeats throughout the whole song 
Um, and then as far as the video is concerned, it was just simply a case of kind of reverse engineering it. So um, I had to um, start with um, makeup on and uh, I basically just wiped it off. But of course, in order to do that, I needed to um, learn to sing the chorus backwards. So uh, once I'd recorded the song, I flipped, flipped it, um, played it in reverse over and over again. I actually wrote out the, um, the lyrics phonetically, so I got used to singing uh, which is reverse oh, wow. for That's No Way to Love You. <laughs> oh, and, um, and, and basically just um, learned to sing it that way. Um, and then I think that was my fourth take, I think, for... Um, you know, for doing it. So, so can I? Uh, that's it's just incredible. Like I couldn't believe you'd done that. But then, with every clip you do, I'm kind of like, oh my god, another new technique I've not even thought of. <laughs> so that's incredible. Can I ask? Do you have YouTube playing in a browser? That's a good question. Let's have a look. I might want to mute it. That's it. Fixed it. Yeah. Must have been. Hey, brilliant. <laughs> now I'll sound at least coherent. All right. And I won't right. need. And I won't need these headphones on. Brilliant. I just make sure there's. I just make sure. There's, uh, see, we're getting uh, your speakers, so we're getting now, back speakers now back through. So okay. you may need headphones in. So you may in. need headphones in. Headphones in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not only am I a musician <laughs> and a host of a YouTube channel, YouTube channel. I'm a technician. I'm a technician. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. We're yeah. back. Yeah. Rock and roll, We're man. Nice. Folks, right. mistakes uh, make you better. And never give up <laughs> and never get upset. Take two. Just, Let's start again. Just go with it. <laughs> Look, man, I'm, I'm super impressed by that video clip. Not, I, I was, I've got my mate sta uh, staying here and we shot a video yesterday. I'll just tell you this story. And I showed him that clip. And, um, you know, it was a really, I put on my big screen TV for the first time uh, of watching Bruise yesterday. And not only is the subject matter of that song incredibly powerful but the way the video clip is put together i was again i'm thinking about it now and just getting really emotional for anybody who's like suffered any kind of uh, abuse physical abuse or emotional abuse I, I think you know the simplicity of it and that single shot and the the pain that you conveyed in it and just it, it's an it's an incredible achievement you know I, and i I just yeah I, I can't say it enough i think i think it's a, a, a fantastic so the the, yeah. the process just is amazing so congratulations on that thank you it's it's probably my probably hardest hitting song i would say subject matter wise it certainly is and um uh, i really like the simplicity of, of creating a, a a simple video and, and to be honest i haven't got green screen and i haven't got <laughs> all the technology in order to create that so you kind of got to work with what you've got so um so yeah i just i just kept it really simple and um yeah and yeah it's it, to me it's just the songs about you know hopefully trying to uh, break the cycle of abuse it's about a guy who's watching an abusive re uh, relationship from afar and, and hoping to sort of make um take take the, the the girl away from that situation um it initially the song initially started with the concept of a guy who steps in at a, a kind of a fight at a bar you know sort of you know guy versus girl at a bar sort of thing that's where the whole concept sort of started but um uh, but yeah and then it involved it evolved into bruised uh, as it is uh, today so yeah it was, uh, it was pretty cool to be able to sort of at least you know get that topic out there so a uh, call to arms folks get out and buy glenn's album right now and get all of his albums so all the links are in the description so it can go to his green screen fund and <laughs> we can get we can get some really super super next level shit <laughs> when we talk about the apps i've got ways around green screen using uh, using my ipad so i've kind of um uh, got some tips later on for, for, for that. Excellent. So I will say hello to folks in the chat because uh, here they all are. Now I'll run through the list. Tim Osborne says, um, I, I think he's gone away, but hello to you. Um, Tom Rochelle, Andy Goldsby, SM Borthwick. We're going through the list here. Wow, there's heaps of you here. So thanks for coming along today. Uh, did I say Stu, Benedict Stewart, uh, Dr. Zorders. Clearly Epic is here. Bindi Leach, welcome along to you also. Scrolling Rock, <laughs> Heart Music. Um, Lee Crampton, who else? Oh man, there's so many of you. Erica Johnson, Minor, welcome along to you too. Deep Gravity, can't forget you also. If I have forgotten you, 
punch your name in the text so I can call your name out because that's important. Um, all right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty of these questions. The question I ask everybody who comes on the show. Glenn, what does music mean to you? Oh, what does music mean to me? Um, oh, music is just a, it's a creative outlet. Um, it's how I uh, just yeah, <laughs> offload and un, un, unleash, I suppose. Um, you, you probably notice that a lot of my music has a fairly dark undertone. Now, I'm completely not like that. Um, in real life, and I just wonder if that's <laughs> that's possibly why I have this creative outlet. But um, yeah, it's I just absolutely um, uh, love music, and um, it's not I guess always been that way. I sort of I'm quite a late bloomer when it comes to to music, um, but um, yeah, it's it's just for me, it's just creativity. I've just I'm always creating in some way, whether it's um, artwork or whether it's um, uh musically uh just you know always trying to uh create and better myself sort of thing yeah i find it interesting because you said you know uh that bruise was one of your darker ones you, you do have a, a you know some really compelling stuff there some really controversial not controversial but you you push the the boundaries of um you, know, you go, do go to dark places is what i'm trying to say so and and it is quite jarring because you have quite a sunny disposition as a person <laughs> and then seeing you in all of these clips is like very demonic kind of looking characters and, <laughs> and covered in bruises and and driving along in a car and, and backbeats with shovels from i guess <laughs> burying corpses or whatever I've I've got a, a background in theatre as well, so I guess um, it's a, it's an outlet for me to get uh, you know, my acting out there as well. Um, uh, probably uh, 2018, I think I played um, the lead role in Witches of Eastwick uh, stage oh, wow. musical. I was uh, I played the devil, so wow. the character you see in a couple of those. Um, uh, clips is almost reminiscent of what I looked like as um, as as the devil in the witches of Eastwick. So uh, yeah, so theatre's played a big part in my life as well, and and that sort of um, hopefully comes out in some some of the video clips and things like that as well. So as Billy Eilish would say, you're the bad guy. <laughs> I love the bad guy. There's so much more interesting things to be the bad guy. Yeah, definitely. Um, hello to Langston Reese. I missed you. Sorry about that. I saw someone else do. I didn't. I miss. Just scrolling back. I don't think I have. Maybe I. Have. Oh, and hello to Sarah in the over on Facebook, and hello to Derek who's sitting in my room, who's just made a comment too. Um, <laughs> All right, so uh, do you remember what was the music that you recall as a kid that was played in your household by your parents, and and has it had an influence on your music today? That my parents played, um, we didn't probably play that much music, to be honest. We, it was it was more. Um, uh, the races that, or, you know, dad would be listening to the horses and stuff like that. Oh so, my God, or, that was my or, dad too. Yeah, or, or rugby would be playing or, or whatever it was. So that was kind of, um, there wasn't a huge amount of music, but um, we did have a little, um, I remember we had a little record player and we had a, a bunch of old 45 records. And um, one of them that was played on repeat quite regularly was a song by, I think that the song's called Mississippi and I, I'm sure the band is... Um, uh, the Pussy Cats or something like that, um, and that got played on repeat. Um, we used to get um, tortured at Christmas time uh, when Dad would pull out the Willie Nelson Christmas oh. album, um, <laughs> Pretty Paper, and put that on, and um, which is actually I grew to appreciate as I as I grew older, but hated it at the time. But um, <laughs> Uh, but most of my musical influence kind of came from my uh, my mates. We were all into Bowie, um, you know, growing up in the sort of um, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, Bowie was a huge influence uh, on us as kids, you know, just, um, you know, it affected your hairstyles and the tightness of your trousers and all that sort of thing as well. Um, and then um, I remember sort of our kids at school um, playing uh, U2's War album, for example, and it was just like, what is this yeah, stuff, you yeah. know? Um, it was really um, amazing. And then, um, you know, you kind of go through and, and then you get a, bit of, get, get a bit of money yourself and you buy your first album and things like that. And um, What was your first which album? Could, 
Uh, my first album was um, was a cassette. It wasn't on record. It was actually on on the heady days of cassette. Uh, it was Men at Work, Business as Usual. Nice. Um, so a good Aussie band, <laughs> yeah. and um, yeah, uh, that's just you know early eighties. That's you know that's what was being sort of played around those times. So it's it's really cool. But um, and then just kind of as my musical. Um, uh, I guess knowledge matured. Um, I sort of moved into. Uh, I, I dabbled with the Sex Pistols and um, Iron Maiden. I went through a massive Iron Maiden phase. Up the and, irons. Uh, really, yeah, up the irons. Um, uh, you two Sisters of Mercy, even you know these kind of um, uh, random goth bands and things like that. But also In Excess and uh, the Water Boys, and and so it was a really good uh, sort of melting pot of really cool influences. Yeah, wow, and and you know, I kind of expected that from your music taste because there is a wide range of stuff in there. You know, there, there definitely is. Uh, uh, and and hearing Sex Pistols, that makes sense as well too. I love how you say dabbled in Sex Pistols. Dabbled in the Sex Pistols. <laughs> like, dabbled in the black <laughs> arts for a while. <laughs> with, the, with the Sex Pistols for a year or two. <laughs> a few years that weren't so good. A few, a few years that weren't so straight as a comedian I heard say once. Um, <laughs> awesome. So, um, what was your first instrument? Oh, my first instrument was, uh, believe it or not, well, was the violin. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, um, I actually had a couple of guitar lessons when I was at primary school, and the guitar was probably twice as tall as I was. It was massive. And I distinctly remember having to lug this guitar to and from school, and I hated it. And then I saw the guitar teacher's hands were like these gnarly sort of <laughs> hands, and I, it put me off, and I was like, I don't, oh, I don't want to have hands like that. You know, when you're a kid, you remember these sort of things. And then... Um, when I was about 10 or 11 at intermediate school, I did a hearing test and they um, they said, oh, congratulations, you've got 2020 uh, pitch um, hearing or whatever it was. And they said, uh, and here's me thinking, oh, great, I'll get something cool like the flute or something. Um, and then I was handed a violin and said, great, you're a violinist. And so um, the problem is I can't read music. I've never learned and I have no idea what those dots on a page mean. Um, so, so yeah, violin was my first foray into music for a couple of years, screeching out, um, you know, different songs, um, destroying my family as I practiced in the bedroom. <laughs> I was going to say with a, a family who's like more into listening to horse racing and sport, I'm sure that would have gone down. Yeah, that's <laughs> oh, what's he doing in the bedroom, screech, screech. Um, and so I didn't actually pick up a guitar until, um, oh, I would have been probably in my late 20s, early 30s, a guy walked into work and he said, um, and he had a guitar and he was just going to take it down to cash converters, the pawn shop sort of thing, and sell it. And I said, oh, what do you want for it? And he sort of said, oh, 40 bucks. And I said, well, I'll give you 40 bucks for it. Took it home, threw it in the corner and left it for a couple of years. And then it was like, I really should try and learn the guitar. And I closeted myself away for three days over a weekend, long weekend, and um bought a how to play guitar book with a cd and taught myself six chords and then thought i was pretty pretty hot <laughs> well you mentioned willie nelson the man's lived off three chords his entire career so it's absolutely yeah, yeah. It's, there's nothing wrong with only knowing like a handful of chords and and you know i hear it all the time people say some of the best musicians nearly all the best musicians have no real music knowledge you know, no, hang on, no, rephrase that because I obviously have music, but no um, taught music knowledge, no professional, the way you're supposed to learn music, apparently. Well, I think what what uh, was the real eye opener for me was when at, at the back of this um, How to Play Guitar book had a list of all the songs that contain G, E minor, C, and D. And I just strung them all together. And it was just, or, you know, E, A, B songs. And it was just it suddenly blew my mind that all of these songs had the same chords. It was incredible. So, um, you know, I just kind of went from there and, you know, started doing things like trying busking and joining bands and, you know, that sort of stuff. So. Well, cool. I want to get onto that next, but how have your hands panned out? Are, are they gnarly and fucked up? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. 
<laughs> I'm an office worker, so they're smooth and, and, and soft. <laughs> you should contact that teacher and like... <laughs> and except when I'm digging in the garden, in which case then, then they, they, they get a bit gnarly then. You need to track down that teacher on Facebook and take some photos of your hands and send them and go, ha, 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 never happened to me, crypt lady. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Um, all right, so you busking. I'm always interested in hearing busking stories because I'm, I'm a busker. I, I busked for many, many years. Years. Um, and, and I had Samantha Edge on the show too, and she, she's a busker as well. And look, I think busking is an incredible um, thing for any artist to do. Not only does it give you the skills to um, for public speaking, for being on stage, it helps you deal with dickheads, helps you, uh, yeah, it gives you so much street cred because you're on the street. How did you fall into busking? And what's the craziest shit that happened to you while you were busking? <laughs> <laughs> um i didn't we didn't busk for too long to be honest I, we started uh i say we because it was a mate and myself um who eventually went on to form form our band but we um started busking at garage sales so we're oh, wow. you know, people having having a sale and we thought oh we'll just go along and provide some entertainment and um and just as people shop for other people's um, discarded stuff, I guess. But so, <laughs> so we did that. Yeah, and then we thought, oh, let's let's try our hand at busking. We went into town. We literally only knew six songs um, at that time. Um, there was like songs like Breakfast at Tiffany's, um, <laughs> you know, Deep Blue Something. <laughs> That's pretty much the sort of stuff we we played. And we kind of worked out that people would stop and move on after two or three songs. So you could actually get away with playing the same six songs over and over again. Um, and that's what, that's what we did. We just, just for a laugh, I think we came away with, you know, 20 bucks that, that we've split amongst each other sort of thing. Um, and yeah, so it was just a, but there wasn't really any, any crazy shit that happened. Um, we were, we perhaps weren't as, um, as exciting or as, as talented as some buskers. So people would just kind of, <laughs> see us and pass on by yeah it depends on your times and stuff too and when the the crazy people are out in the full moons definitely <laughs> um, uh, yeah but you're right with songs like you know if anybody is considering busking don't ever freak out and try and learn you know 40 songs you only need <laughs> six really and, and some days i would just go out for three hours and play one song over and over again because the same people don't pass you you know, the extended max. Yeah, <laughs> just the extended twelve-inch version. I think it's why I hate "Last Kiss" by Pearl Jam. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. oh my god! Um, but I used to do it for the footy crowds, so they oh, would be nice. leaving the footy and coming yeah. home on the train, and they're all they're all pissed out of their brains. Yeah, they just <laughs> throw money. Um, good times. So that led you into a band. What was your first band called? Oh, so the first band uh, is the one that I'm still in. It's called right. uh, Decoy Duck. So, um, Holy shit, that's a lot of years. Yeah, we've been around uh, probably 18, 19 years now. Um, and actually, the name came from a garage sale, busking at a garage sale, because someone was selling a, an old wardrobe or something, and some students turned up and they wanted an old wardrobe, um, but they were umming and ahhing. And then someone said... If you buy the wardrobe, we'll throw in the decoy duck, and because uh, someone was selling a decoy duck, and so everyone's always selling like, a decoy duck. <laughs> there's there's hundreds of decoy ducks out there, and so um, they bought the decoy duck and went off. And then afterwards, we were like, that would be a really cool name for a band. Why didn't we keep the duck? So, uh, so we um, we got together with a couple of like-minded uh, theatre people, played at a, a couple of you know learn you know, half a dozen songs, more than the six songs that are already new, uh, and played at a couple of theatre parties. Um, and then we approached a local bar um, who um, said, basically, you can play for us if you learn four hours worth of set material. So then we uh, that was our inspiration to actually set to work and, and actually properly learn some stuff. Um, we're a five-piece boy band i guess you'd call us uh, boy band with instruments um but we don't um we're kind of quite quirky in that we don't play um yes sort of stock standard rock covers we play a lot of um uh female inspired songs as well we do a lot of pat benatar and madonna and pink and abba and we just rock it up and uh, uh it goes down really well you know? 
Love it. What a great name. Great story. I love I, I, I love bands with interesting stories. <laughs> decoy Duck. Now, now I want a Decoy Duck on the show in the background for me just to sit over <laughs> behind where Darth Vader is. Exactly right. Yeah, you've got to love the duck. <laughs> so I want to move on to your family because... You know, I've known you for a, a fair while and listening to your music and, you know, anybody who watched uh, your stream today would know uh, one of the songs in there um, even features your daughter in there. So how, how in, like, I, I've clearly, I know your family is very important to you. Of course, all families are. But how, how does your family integrate with your music how, how does and time management and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> um, yeah, it's been... It's, it's, I suppose, really um, tricky to record, write and record three albums in the time that we've had. It. I've got a young family. My kids are um, seven and nine, a boy and a girl. Um, and so most of the work that I do is when everyone's asleep. So, you know, kids go to sleep at seven, eight o'clock at night, um, sit around and be sociable for a short while and then nip off to, um, to the studio here and um, just start recording. So... Um, and often I'll, I'll be going to bed at sort of 1, 2 a.m. in the morning just um, trying to get the, the last guitar part written or you know, sorted, you know, all that sort of stuff. So a lot of it's done when the whole household is asleep, including the videos, that I might add. Um, and um, uh, But but actually, um, I've in included the kids with a lot of the recording as well. So um, 1665 is, is uh, my song that includes um, my daughter singing a... Um, a nursery rhyme from that era and um, it's, in fact she's uh, from the age of about four she she appeared on one of my very first songs which is a, a song called Anesthetic Running Through My Veins um, it's on the first album and she provided a scream for me I needed a little girl screaming and so she, she sort of started her uh, foray into the recording um, studio from that age um, and then uh, since then, um, she's also written her own song, which um, uh, is called "Waiting for a Moment," and um, she wrote all the all the words to it. I provided the the chords and did the the recording. She then did all the vocals, uh, and that's actually gone on to um, to her schools, picked it up. They've learned it. The whole school of nine hundred kids have learned that song and uh, performed it at the school assembly and stuff like that. And so it's been really cool to sort of foster. Um, her love of music and um, she's always interested in the videos that I'm creating although some I'm, they haven't seen yet <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah so it's been really cool working with them um, my son also likes to, um, to s sort of you know be involved in, in, in the recording side as well and actually he's, he was the one that sort of has done a wee bit of video filming for my daughter's song as well so um, they all sort of get involved um their attention span comes and goes but yeah. um <laughs> yeah, as it does but um yeah they, they really enjoy hearing themselves and you know they have a sort of sense of pride that uh, you know that they're um you know involved and they've got their name out and on youtube and for them it's all about the likes and how many views has of it got that sort of yeah. thing but <laughs> they, you know, every once in a while dad how, ma how many views has my clip got now so <laughs> yeah so they're at, at a young age already looking at that sort of thing so I want you as my dad now. <laughs> okay. I, I, I can adopt you, Jay. Adopt I'm sure. <laughs> I won't dress up weird in baby clothes or anything. Um, yep, I might. <laughs> oh, yes. All right. Now I'm really in. <laughs> now that's super inspiring. You know, the next thing I'm, I'm expecting, uh, your daughter's probably going to want you to get a musician's account at with District Kid so she can have her own band name and have her album out that's on right. Apple Music. So. Yep. That, that can be done <laughs> yes <laughs> oh man i would be the first one to buy that I, I love that kind of stuff you know um god i was gonna i'll, I'll do that what uh, soon because there's an amazing picture of you too that i really love and i don't think that was drawn by her it was it, it's a little sketch of you that is on your facebook page oh okay yep it's, it'll be one that she's drawn so that's her drawing himself. i yeah. love that picture yeah. so much yeah. with the little go it, it, it's yeah it's it looks so similar i know actually. it's amazing so i'll <laughs> dig that up um sooner or later so but we'll okay. get to it so what we'll do now just because we've talked about i just think that's really incredible so so kudos to you and congratulations on that i love the way you've you incorporate your family into it i think that's really 
really fantastic. So let's Thanks. listen to this song. This is one of my favorite tracks, actually. Uh, this is another track when I first saw the video. I was just absolutely blown away because it, it was like, oh my God, here's another skill that you have. You're an artist as well. But we'll, we'll touch on this too. And let's play this. So this is... Um, 1665 i'm just going to bring the video up here very unprofessional of me didn't want that to start but that's mistakes make you better as they say so we'll jump into this clip folks this is 1665 by glenn clark and we shall see you again shortly <laughs> start to fall There was nothing we could do Ooh. House to house in isolation Crosses painted on the doors And come the morning you won't know who'll be outside So we just wave and then withdraw Streets are decomposing We watch the well-to-do escape Ask your mother if you can come out to play But we're locked in for 40 days the candles burning
Wow. Okay, so that was uh, 1665 by Glenn Clark. And um, he's already answered this question in the uh, chat. But uh, those who aren't in the chat, I get to ask it now. So, welcome back to the stream, Glenn. Are you a prophet? <laughs> uh, no, I'm a not-for-profit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because um, this... No, so, yeah. so this song, I I, um, I recorded it probably the start of February, I think it came out, and wow. it was kind of before we knew anything about what COVID was going to be like. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, I don't know, just coincidence, I think. But I've always kind of been obsessed with... Um, weird and wonderful things that happen in history because um, it just makes for fascinating storytelling. So, um, yeah, why not tackle a song about the Great Plague? So yeah, That's what I did. I, I love it. Like, yeah, I was, I was looking at it today and I actually forgot to check the date because I was going to do that before and say, actually, when did you do this? Because, you know, it's, it's amazing how it's just fit in here. So um, the, the, the topic so it's a which plague is this based on that song what was it based on it's yeah well because there's been a few it was basically yeah there have been a few that there's the, the um there's a main one which was kind of like 1350 something i'm no historian that's just what <laughs> based yeah. on what i've read but um and then this was the uh the last great plague which happened just before the fire of london in 1666 so um yeah so that that whole period it was about three years there which was really quite sort of fascinating and horrific times of course as well um the reference at the start of the song to um a comet trail apparently was something that happened around that time as well and in fact in just uh, you know the late 1664 there was a comet and everyone didn't know what it was what it was for or what it was about they, were, they thought it was some sort of omen and um so i kind of incorporated that event into the song as well just to um you know keep it historically accurate <laughs> yeah because um look you know it's it's a it's an incredible coincidence before anything else and i think you know um i think it's a great reminder too that um i think people need to realize that we have gone through a lot of plagues in our times and mm. we're gonna get through this one if we all come together i think that's the the thing that um uh, people are missing at the moment with this play what are your thoughts on how people are reacting to the plague in these crazy times at the moment it's crazy times odd oh, well i can only kind of speak from a new zealand perspective and we um we took it really seriously right at the start and we locked locked everything down for um, a number of weeks and thankfully we've um, only got sort of a handful of community cases I think we've had 22 deaths because of it sort of thing so um, I really applaud the New Zealand government for the action that they took and kept us all safe um, it was it was difficult times but um, but sort of we I guess we've got the benefit of isolation um, and little old New Zealand tucked away from everyone, everyone one else sort of thing. So, uh, so I really feel for um, people in other uh, other parts of the world that are, um, you know, uh, that don't have that sort of the luxury that we've we've got of isolation sort of thing. I suppose it's um, yeah, it's quite horrific sort of seeing the death rate just keep going up, um, and you know, makes you think about you know, plagues gone by when we didn't have medical technology or understanding and things like that. It's, it's crazy times. Yeah, but that's the point. We did get through it. That is the thing without all that technology. And uh, we we do now. So, you know, uh, yeah, we're going to get through this as well. And I think, you know, songs. Uh, so I want to know, too. So the whole King, it's King Dilly, Dilly Willy, is it? Oh, yeah. Um, Where did yeah, that, that uh, come Le from? Le Lavender's Blue. So Lavender's Blue is a... Uh, my, when I wrote the song, I kind of thought, oh, it would be really cool to have a, a child singing a nursery rhyme. And so I then started looking at what nursery rhymes were around. Now, the first thing that popped into my mind is um, Ring of Roses, um, yep. which actually isn't about the Black Plague. It's kind of a modern misconception which came around in, I think, about the 1950s that they started equating Ring of Roses with the, the, Black, the Black Death. But actually, um, it's, it's just a modern iteration um of that um uh, 
nursery rhyme, so it wouldn't have been appropriate to use. So I then went back and I found some records that indicated um, when certain nursery rhymes were published. And this one was published uh, first in print around um, 1668 or some somewhere 67, something around those times. So it must have been sung at around about the time um, of... Um, that you know the plague so i kind of just put two and two together and thought um let's you know call it a nursery rhyme of the time um it's also a very um subtle nod to david bowie who um used it um live occasionally at the start of his heroes um song so uh, he used a snippet of that as well so it's it's really impactful i, I love the way that it's uh it's tied into the song. Her the, the her performance is amazing, and so I want to ask also about the clip too. Um, how did you actually uh, design the the drawings and stuff? Was that done on your iPad or was it done on iOS? Mm. Yep, absolutely. Um, iPad for the win. Um, so I used. Uh, I've got an iPad Pro uh, and the Procreate app, which is um, uh, a fantastic. Um, graphics app I guess um, and it's just all hand drawn and the beauty of the Procreate app which incidentally is a good Australian company too I think they're based out of Hobart um, the uh, creators of it um, the beauty is that you can actually record um, as you draw so each and every pen stroke that you make um, is recorded as uh, as a video and it was simply a case of drawing the pictures I wanted and then um, slotting it all together in iMovie and then overlaying it with a few words, um, uh, transitions and things like that. But um, it's it, th this app costs about, oh, it's cheap as chips, it's about $8 New Zealand, I don't know what. <laughs> it's really, really cheap to buy, but it's so powerful. It's the um, Photoshop equivalent for your iPad. It's just an immense app. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, I'm just showing it on the screen here. I think it's, uh, it's Australian. I think it's like 15 bucks for the iPad version. There's an iPhone version as well, too. Yep, which yep. Is there's, a, a, separate. there's a light version, yeah, the, the iPhone version. But it's um, six bucks. totally, yeah, totally recommend um, Procreate, even just for, for doodling. But And so a lot of my, um, I was going to mention the sort of the green screen um, side of things. I use Procreate as my green screen. So... Um, you can actually create a completely green screen background and whatever you draw on that can then be applied to um, iMovie as if it's a green screen and it will appear over the top. Um, so it's kind of a, a good way to get around not having green screen. Yeah, and I'll put up on my screen because I've been uh, I've done quite a few shows on here on Procreate. So those of you who are new to the channel, um, like this, I do these interviews like once a week. This week it's twice. I've actually done an interview, so I'm, I'm working overtime. But normally I'm talking about apps and showing off apps and stuff like that. And um, I'll show you on the screen here. So this week I did um, shows exactly what you're talking about, drawing mm. these green screen images like this in procreate for my storyboard for my new video clip and so you can just then drop this into something like luma fusion or final cut whatever you use and then use the green screen functionality to uh, storyboard and, and and animate so that's a really cool thing to do also uh, look it's just an, it's just such an incredible engaging video clip i love it so much so again congratulations on it um thanks do you regard yourself as an artist? Um, uh, like a, uh, as in drawing? Uh, yeah, in... I, uh, I have got uh, an artist page. I, I, I probably haven't drawn for for quite a while, but um, yeah, I, I used to really enjoy um, sketching and doodling and doing lots of um, weird and wonderful pictures. I, I guess my artwork is a wee bit like my um, music. It's kind of... Um, slightly quirky <laughs> and um uh and you know different sort of subject matters and things like that but um <laughs> that, that's not one of my pieces <laughs> but it's probably actually quite similar to something i might draw um <laughs> it's, it's actually quite a good likeness isn't it? no i it's mean amazing. look at that let's get it yeah. next to you over there <laughs> it's, 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 it's yeah. pretty similar <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find the other one. I, I thought I saved it. Oh, I'm sure it's around somewhere. I, I jumped on um, Facebook, but I couldn't find it. 
oh, I wonder where it's gone. Um, but yeah, so I, um, I, I, I guess um, creator again, it's the creativity thing. Um, whether um, because you know, sketching also helps you think about uh, other stuff. It's kind of like tuning out and you're doing something, and then you might get an idea. You stop drawing and go off and write a song, kind of thing. So it's kind of. Um, yeah, just the creative outlet, um, sketching and drawing as well. As but I, I haven't had the luxury of doing that for quite a while. Only as and when required, um, because I've been focusing on the music side of things. And um, so, how like how did you get into home recording? What what drew, how how long have you been doing it, and what do you use? So. Um, Thanks to Decoy Duck again. Um, so <laughs> back in, I think it was late 2016, we all piled around to, to one of the guys' houses and um, started uh, and decided we'd have a rehearsal, but we recorded it. And it was the first time we've ever recorded uh, ourselves. Now, we're just a covers band. We, we don't play any original music. And um, so we recorded a few cover songs. Uh, I think he used um, uh, Reaper uh, initially to record it and I took the WAV files home because I had um, uh, the Mac sitting there, I use uh, a, a very old 2011 iMac for my home recording um, and decided I, I wanted to add some sort of backing vocals to um, uh, to the tracks and then it was like well how am I going to do that I need to learn how to use GarageBand so I taught myself to use GarageBand and um, Pretty much once I'd learned that, I, I was fishing through some paperwork one day and I discovered uh, a song that I'd written when I'd first started learning guitar. I'd probably had about half a dozen songs that I wrote. And um, and then I decided that I'd um, try and record it and see what it sounded like. And it actually worked out way better than I ever, <laughs> ever hoped that it would. And then um, I then threw it on my bucket list to see if I could get a song onto iTunes or Apple Music or something and then I started investigating and found it's a lot easier to do than I initially <laughs> sort of hoped so um, so yeah that kind of led me down that way but um, but yeah I just use an iMac um, I use uh, this good old little uh, Behringer UMC interface um, it's got some amazing um, preamps in it which are really cool uh, I've got a Rode NT1 microphone and um, yeah, my guitars and uh, and my iPad. I can't. Uh, I, I use my iPad as kind of uh, a virtual keyboard using Logic Remote and things like that. So um, I use that to do all the synth pads and um, quite a lot of the stuff is actually uh, done using the iPad connected to the iMac. So it's been that's really a, unique. A I don't see a lot of people doing that. So. So that's, um, I guess that saves buying a keyboard as well too. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I, I can't play keyboards. <laughs> so I just, um, uh, you know, when you're using uh, Logic Remote, you can um, essentially, uh, it's a bit like using GarageBand and assigning, you know, I want these particular chords, and then it's just a case of pushing a button and playing the chords at the right time. So, um, so it, I don't know if you call it cheating, but I just call it creating, so, yeah. It's definitely not cheating, and I think more people should not be <laughs> should not be afraid of that because you know I do that too, and it's great for drums. You can you know record a a, a kick by itself and then just go over it with a snare by itself, and it's not totally. it's not cheating. Like if you think you know people think that's cheating, or anybody ever tells you don't do that, it's cheating. Like think about how many massive artists there are out in the world who record these amazing albums, and then you see them live. And they sound like shit. Like, you know, so the biggest artists, uh, I saw Britney Spears, unfortunately, due to my ex-wife. Um, and holy fuck, she couldn't sing for shit. It was horrible. It was really horrible. Um, so, you know, if you are sitting out there and anybody ever tells you, like playing a keyboard one finger at a time and then going over and do the next finger for a chord, they tell you that's wrong, tell them to go and get effed. Yeah, exactly right. Yep, <laughs> I know. So it's all part of the creative process, and um, you know, it's the end result that matters, really, isn't it? You know? Yeah, you and you, you you use what you have too. I think that's really innovative that you're using an iPad, you know, because I know when I first asked you to come on the show, and there's a few people I've had on the show who don't use iOS specifically, but these shows aren't about that. 
um, about people who are creative, and that's uh, it doesn't matter how you make it. But uh, it's I haven't really had anyone on the show who integrates their iOS device into their actual Mac. It's normally either mm. someone uses one or the other. It's that yeah. seems to be the well, way. The, the cool thing is, and and this will be one of the apps I talk about later, is the Logic Remote gives you a virtual mixing desk. Um, which is something that's missing from the Mac version of GarageBand. So you've got the um, the faders, and um, it's, it's, it's just makes it a whole lot easier to actually um, use. And uh, uh, I find it's yeah, it's invaluable. Um, you know, guitar parts, bass parts, and all that sort of thing. That's all all cool. Um, but um, but yeah, when it comes to putting down synth sounds or um, uh, any sort of keyboard sounds, then uh, yeah, that's that's my go-to. Um, you've got a wee keyboard there. You can just select the chord strips if you really want to do it that way. Um, but yeah, super simple. So I know not every you know artist has the exact same process to create music. Clearly, everyone has their own way, and even somebody who may think they have a set way changes all the time. So uh, with you actually creating. Because, uh, how do I put this? Let's let's rephrase this. So it seems like with your music that it's it when you create a song, there's much more thought behind just the song, and you're thinking ahead to the video and the feeling. Do you start with a story, or or, mm. or an actual riff, or because you know your, your music's quite complex. Mm. Um, I start with a shower. So um, that's the um, of course you do. that's the yeah, as every good song starts with a shower. Um, it, it's basically and the it sounds a bit strange, but actually this is the place where you kind of zone out, and and that's where I find uh, your mind just starts to drift, and then it's like oh, that's a cool riff or a, or a song, and so then I. Um, uh, jump out of the shower, grab my phone, and jump onto the um, the Music Memos app, which is uh, on the I- iPhone, and literally hum whatever I've thought. Um, they don't all start that way, but um, but yeah, for the most part, it's me humming into my phone um, just a, a little riff or, or a tune that I've thought of, and then I try and work it out. Um, uh, on guitar later, and that's the beauty of the Music Memos app is that it provides you with uh, the chords that you've hopefully <laughs> hopefully sung, so it gives you a starting point at least. Yeah. Um, uh, but the but yeah, so Bruised is probably uh, the exception where I've had a Visio concept and then worked backwards from there. But for the most part, uh, I just hear um, uh, a, a line of music and just sing it. Um, occasionally, it's a it's a line of. Um, um, a line of lyric as well. So uh, in my song "Roll with Me," um, uh, there's uh, it was one of the lines that just um, you know, if you roll with me, you'll never fade away. That popped into my mind, um, or I'm the one that leads you astray. Uh, and I was kind of was intrigued by that by that line. Um, if you roll with me, you'll never fade away. What could it mean? And so I've actually worked the song backwards from there. Um, and when it comes to songwriting, I don't tend to like the boy meets girl standard sort of love song style things i i tend to avoid those like the plague um but i um i like stories that tell um sort of interesting or unusual topics um i like to get a character put them in a situation and then make it even worse for them um i think i think that that creates a nice story sort of thing so um yeah so basically that's that's where it starts it'll either be a lyric or maybe a wee riff and then i'll just build it from there i detect a theme here of working backwards a lot it's funny yeah it's it's only just occurred to me (laughs) (laughs) everything in fact throughout the uh my latest album and and in some of the others i use a lot of backwards um uh you know, um, snips and, and clips. I'll, I'll get a lead break and I'll reverse it and, and put it underneath, um, you know, at the end of a song. Or um, in 1665 that you've just played, um, my daughter's uh, vocal part is actually reversed right at the end of the song under the sort of chaos that's the last passage. Um, that's her vocals reversed. So it's just added a kind of a spookiness to, um, to the end of the song. 
Um, same again for uh, my song Unrestrained, which uh, I, I used a, a vocal passage that I used earlier in the song, flipped it <laughs> and threw it in the back there. And again, it's me being lazy and not bothering to record anything else, but it's just kind of, it sound, I, I, yeah, I love stuff that sounds cool backwards. It's just, yeah, it's kind of a bit of a, I suppose it's becoming an obsession really, isn't it? <laughs> Gonna need help. Uh, have you seen uh, Freddie got fingered with Tom Green? Um, no. <laughs> he's got a, I'm thinking he's got a song in it where he sings the backwards man. <laughs> he goes, "I'm the backwards oh. man. I'm the backwards man. I can walk backwards as fast." It's so stupid, but it's just it's making me think of for some reason. Oh, my brain works in stupid ways. Um, do you think you you um, you said uh, it's, maybe it's a bit lazy? I find that hard to believe. Do you think you stumble across things? Are there a, a times where you stumble across things that just work? Or or is this just part of your genius that you create these things? Is it a mix? <laughs> Serendipity is my best friend. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know. I I do have a lot of happy accidents. Yeah. That, that probably sounds a lot worse than it actually is. Um, <laughs> but... But, um, you know, I just, I just look at things like if I want to swell before um, bef to, to lead from a, um, a bridge into a, a chorus um, passage, then I'll take a note that, um, that I played earlier and reverse it so that it builds up into the uh, things like that. So that's kind of where it sort of started from, where, where I kind of look around and think, I've already recorded this stuff. Can I use it in some other way to um, enhance or contribute to the rest of the song sort of thing? So, um, but yeah, I, I've had a lot of, um, yeah, good luck with some of the things that I've tried and it's gone, oh yeah, actually that, that does work. I'll just keep it in there sort of thing. For someone like me who is a fan of your music and watches and waits with bated breath for each song that you release and video and uh, uh, it's getting to this point now where the expectation levels are getting higher each time. Do you feel pressure to create something as innovative as the last thing? Um, in a way, it's kind of, um, yeah, that my last two or three videos have kind of been stepping up <laughs> and stepping up and stepping up. Um, and, yeah, I guess I'll get to a point where it's where I'll put a video out and people are like, boo, that's rubbish. It's not, it wasn't as good as that one. Um, it can so, happen. But it yeah. can happen. So, it, you know, it's my own, uh, my own worst critic is, is probably the one that um, uh, uh, is the worst, <laughs> worst person to chat to, uh, my inner critic. Um, but to be honest, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always looking for something different to do. And if it's um, creative and, um, and fun, then yeah, I'll put it out there. So, always having weird and wonderful ideas about that sort of stuff. So is there is there a process that you go through to... Um, uh, does it play on your mind that, you know, this could be a, a thing that is, is going to happen? I mean, because it can be... A, you know, we are all our worst critics. And, mm -hmm. and even though we say, like, perfectionism doesn't exist and, you know, and all this stuff, there still is in each one of us as an artist that drive to, no matter how hard you try and push it aside. So what are your, how do you cope? What are your coping mechanisms to really get through that, to push through that, if any? I don't know. I just, uh, I just keep creating and tr just keep trying to better myself. I think that's, that's all I'm, all I'm doing is just like, okay, well, I've done a backwards video. Now, what am I going to do? I'll, I'll think of something that's, um, that's just as challenging. I mean, um, the roll with me video was probably um, came from a bit of a, a, a dare um, to do a, a video on inline skates, so it kind of led to um, led to that. So yeah, I, I just think I, I, I just want to keep improving, keep trying different things. Um, again, I, I try and keep my videos fairly simple because um, I don't have a lot of um, kit to sort of create things um, and you do do the best with it, you know, what you can. Um, and I generally try and, you know, let the emotion of the performance come through as well um, in, in the videos. So, yeah, I, I think so long as I, you know, I'm always happy so long as I keep creating something that's 
reasonably cool and um, not every video is going to be as <laughs> a winner, but um, you know, that's just the way it's going to be. Yeah, and I'm not trying to put pressure on you by saying that. I think I've asked, I was being quite selfish there asking for myself because mm -hmm. I spent yesterday down in my garage filming a new video clip and I have no idea how it's going to turn out, no matter how many storyboards I, I put up because when you get down and do it, and it's all just hasn't been edited and stuff. You're like, oh, my God, is this going to look good? You start doubting yeah. yourself, too. Um, and after my last clip, I'm, I did it the same way. So I'm just like going, please, <laughs> please. Work. It'll be awesome. Like, It'll be it awesome. It all comes together. So, you know, and it's, it's a thing that I, I think um, put more people are moving into video clips. So I guess that's why I'm hanging on video clips here, because I'm seeing more people in the group here head to making video clips because you it just is the way you you need video clips these days to reach another crowd um do you do you use tiktok no i don't no that's not something i've ever um ever really looked into uh, i know pete johns has talked about tiktok a few times and yeah i've never never actually looked into it so i'm a bit of a um a luddite when it comes to these things i'm relatively new to twitter and um what's it called the instagram and <laughs> the facebook and all those sort of things but um but yeah really uh, i i agree with you i think the um you know it's cool to be able to sell your concept it's nice if the music stands and and, and actually the music should stand on its own as a as a piece of art um but i i just like throwing a video together because it's cool fun to do. And the, the, the reason I ask about TikTok is because, you know, you create, you put a lot of effort into these long form videos that tell a story and there's a, a need in the music industry, it seems at the moment, for these short stabs of things to try and grab people's attention. <laughs> um, and you know, I'm the same. I've only just jumped on TikTok and I think I was on it for 10 minutes and I uploaded a couple of short clips from video clips and then went, this is fucking pointless. Like, I feel like... Is it like 15 second videos or something? Yeah, like a step? minute. Like a minute. And, oh, right. and I don't know. I guess it's where the music industry is heading, you know, with this world of people who skip to the chorus and if it doesn't interest them, they skip. It's like Tinder. They just flip through. Mm. So it's hard for storytellers, I think, stuff like that. But, I mean, for someone like you, right, who creates these um, elaborate worlds with simplicity... I think it'd be really interesting to you'd probably be able to find a market on TikTok to shorten these things down, shorten your clips down to make these mini mm. dark parts of the song. I think your clips would work really well on there. A, a little teaser. Yeah, I think that's also the um, my downfall in a way is that I I, I can't write a short song. Yeah. I don't don't seem to have the I ability to write a short song. Um, so most of my songs are, are around the five minute mark. Some some of them are even longer than that. I think I've got a couple that that are sort of four four and a half minutes. But the old two minute single, three minute single is something that's completely eluded me. And um, because I just get so into it that I just want to <laughs> you know make it as cool as I possibly can, sort of thing. So it's um, yeah. But I but I. The world is uh, sort of uh, looking at these little bite-sized, um, bite-sized chunks to sort of you know feed their themselves and then move on to the next one. So, uh, goldfish. Yeah, it's an interesting the goldfish yeah. of the world. So, uh, if you don't know, folks, so over on Glenn's YouTube channel and the, all the links to all his material, his Facebook, all that stuff, it's all in the description. But uh, what you also do, which I think is really fantastic, is uh, for each of your videos you've got these videos up where you break down how uh, and so i don't think it's all the videos but there's a select few Not all of them, yeah. where you break down how you've made these so um folks if you haven't done if you haven't been over there make sure you subscribe to glenn's channel and go check out the the mindset behind it because it's i think it's really important that artists do that so um Deconstructed um, is the uh, is what I'm calling calling them. I've done two or three songs, and I plan on hopefully doing some more deconstructed for um, some of the tracks on Hide and Seek. Um, but but yeah, I, I I get a lot out of um, watching other people um, deconstruct their tracks, and and I love um, watching videos about how some of the classic tracks were um, put together, and where you know they they play. 
you know, the track and then they isolate, you know, here's what the bass part sounds like, here's what the guitar part sounds like and that sort of thing. And I, I get a lot, of, um, a lot of enjoyment and actually knowledge out of those sort of things. So I'm trying to sort of, I guess, give back in a way, um, you know, and explain my process to, to create uh, the sounds that I do, whether it's me tweeting into a microphone pretending to be a bird in a forest or, um, <laughs> or whatever it is, um, just so that people sort of maybe understand um, the inner workings of this, uh, of, of the mind that is mine. So we're jumping to albums. So look at this, everybody. I actually have Glenn Clark's album on CD. I, I'm a lucky one. Um, so as you can see there in the background, so you've got... Um, so three albums now you've got. There are all your yep. albums. I love that they're framed behind you. That is so beautiful. Um, and like, uh, so are these are these connected? These albums? Yes, in a way they are. Um, so the first album was um, what was the first album called? Nowhere to Hide. <laughs> what was it called? Um, <laughs> what was it called? <laughs> it was called Nowhere to Hide, and um, and I, I called it that. Uh, back in 2017 because it was kind of me putting myself out there as a solo artist and there was nowhere to hide I was the singer, the songwriter, the recorder, the engineer, the mixer, did everything so um, so yeah I, I called it nowhere to hide, threw it out there and it hid really well uh, except for one of the tracks um, which is called Dancing With Your Ghost which has been a big hit in China believe it or not so uh, thank you mainland china who, who are listening to it um hundreds and hundreds of times it's just a, it's just a weird anomaly um the second album uh the one that you've got uh, on cd there jade is uh called hiding in the spotlight so again um hide being the theme and then of course moving into the third album uh which i called hide and seek so this is kind of my hide trilogy um there are a few similarities with each of the albums. So each one has the um, uh, the, the face, the silhouette, um, and some aspect on there. Um, and um, yeah, just uh, for the first two albums, I, I incorporated the title of the album in um, the in the opening track of the song as well. And I've also incorporated the, the the album title Hide and Seek in a couple of the tracks on on the new album as well. So I like to just throw in little Easter eggs, really, um, be it secret messages or um, you know all that sort of stuff. So and there are all your albums and singles on iTunes, so you can get all of these digitally as well. And I'm just going to skip over here because oh, um, there, there's there's one guy on there. That's the other Glenn Clark. <laughs> oh, is that one of them slipped in yeah. there? Is that the I know, is that the rhythm the, of to... of the lovers? No, no, no it's the it's the uh, blue cover with the picture of a guy oh, um, here it is, let me... singing the microphone. It's it's this one. There. That's the one beside Rob. It's there, that one. Yeah, it's that one there. That one. Who's that guy? Yeah, he kind of looks like Willie Nelson he's, a little bit. How's he got in there? The, because... I don't know. He he was around before me, so I'm kind of yeah, obviously jumping on his bandwagon, but that's okay. Well, he's, that's he okay. obviously doesn't monitor his music very much if he's left it there, because all he needs to do is send an email to DistroKid, and they'll fix that for him. Exactly right. <laughs> what a lazy SOB. Um, I'll, I'll show you this too, because uh, I don't know, do you still have copies? Uh, I'll just show you. So I got this. See, I've got a signed copy of this, mm. and I was lucky enough too to get inside this as well. A letter <laughs> which says, you still got that <laughs> of course i've got it here's one of my cds for your listening pleasure i love it it's awesome um it's only one of 30 copies in the universe the whole universe um it was purchased at the restaurant at the end of the universe oh I, I even signed it just in case i become famous one day lol hope you're keeping well all the best glenn so now do you still have these that cd for sale do you have any left Oh, I've got uh, I've got about six of them left, seven of them left, and I've got um, same for nowhere to hide. I've got that about half a dozen of those. Also, thirty copies signed. So, folks, <laughs> and, um, if you really want one, <laughs> the links to Glenn's Facebook page, reach out and get a copy because CDs see. are bloody dying art, and they're worthwhile to get hold of. They are. Um, I, it's. The, the CDs are just a bit of vanity for myself, really, um, because I, I, I quite like the having the physical something physical to actually hold on to. And so um, 
I'll, I'll be sending one of these to uh, to you soon, Jade. Yeah. <laughs> I've got uh, the uh, oh, even signed somewhere in there. Uh, yeah, I like I like reading lyrics and I like yeah, um, seeing um, seeing stuff like that. So I and, and mostly I just give them to friends and family and um, sell the occasional one or two. But um, look, if I if I ever became famous, I'll just get more printed. If people really want CDs, that's easy enough to do. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, and um, we swapped CDs, so that's my CD. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's an awesome one. I, I, the opening track on that album is a killer. And I, I love swapping CDs with artists. I think it's really it goes back to that old tape trading kind of thing. I think it's a, a beautiful thing that we don't have anymore. It's really, really sad that. Yeah. And I haven't. Geez, I just got this in the mail. The new Mister Bungle CD. So I know I, that's a cool, I, cool logo. Eh? I'm still collecting CDs. You know, um, I mean, this CD here. I don't know if I'll get banned for this. <laughs> There's this uh, death metal band here from Australia, and they just released this album, and that's the cover. It's very gory, but the actual cover is really bad. <laughs> and they put it only on the CD, so you can. So I only bought it, not that I'm going to listen to it ever, just so I could have that special artwork, you know. So CDs have so much it's value, cool. I think, you know. So if you do want a CD, make sure you reach out to Glenn and get a hardcore copy because they're very limited so i definitely want to cover that um, make sure you do well, it if, if people want them i might um yeah if there's enough demand i might even throw some on Bandcamp because i think you can sell merch on Bandcamp, which is um uh, probably the best way to do it i think so yeah and i've definitely put a link to your Bandcamp. did you add a new release to that overnight yeah I've, yeah I've i've added both so you can actually buy all three albums on bandcamp at uh, a discounted rate yes um, i love that feature shameless plug time <laughs> uh, so so yeah i've thrown them all up and um a big thank you to uh, a few people who have bought it already so um yeah really appreciate it it's a great feature that isn't it on, on bandcamp i, I use mm. it for all my albums i have um all the all the albums from each band with the discount rate. I think it's really cool that they. I love Bandcamp. I think it's very underrated, and you find a, re, a lot of really um, underground bands who don't want to sell their soul to the Apple machine. So, if you haven't checked out Bandcamp, definitely do it. Um, SM Borthwick definitely wants a CD. So uh, old school. Russ, I don't think I've said hello to Russ as well. So hello, um, Russ what? is a still buy CDs rather than download where I can. Um, what's this? Uh, Tom Michelle says, did Glenn have any difficulty with DistroKid since there's another artist with the same name? Uh, good question. Yes, I did initially. Um, they managed to sort it out pretty quickly. Um, obviously not given that you've just had a look on iTunes and see um, see the the other Glenn Clark. Um, but, yeah, it was fairly easy to sort out um, from memory. It was just a couple of emails that I sent through to them and they got things separated. Um, and I, I, I've still got the odd um, trouble with YouTube still combining us and things like that. But um, I figure if people, um, you know, I've, I promote the artwork you know, often enough. So if people really want to find me, then they'll find me. Um, Andy Goldsby in the chat's trying to get a bit kinky with you. He's asking you if you've got any vinyl, Glenn. Oh, no, he means <laughs> albums. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, I was going to say only on the flooring. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take that offline, Andy. <laughs> Don't let him buddy you up. Um, so, have you considered releasing vinyl? I did, but when I looked into the pricing, it was about oh, it was huge yeah, it's uh, price. I was like, and it, plus my my albums are over an hour long, so I don't know whether that would actually work for for vinyl. Um, I'd probably have to take the best, do a best of vinyl or something like that. That might be the, the way to go. But yeah, it was hugely expensive expensive to do. Yeah, I'm, eventually when my Dread Circus album comes out, I'm releasing it on vinyl. Because um, it's 22 tracks. I oh, know. How am I going to fit that on vinyl? I'm doing a double vinyl album. Yeah, nice. So 11 tracks on each uh, pe on each uh, piece of vinyl. Ooh, it's cool. Vinyl. <laughs> so, this, uh, so let's jump into the new album. How long has it taken you to put together all these songs for the, for the uh, new album? Uh, 10 months, 11 months um, to put it all together. Um, so 12 songs on the album. I started in late December 2019. 
uh, and um, yeah, finished at the end of, end of October. Uh, so yeah, just doing it um, in the evening. It's probably averaging roughly a song a month, I suppose, which um, to to me isn't too onerous. It's kind of you know um, doing a little bit here and there, doing the video and um, popping it popping it into groups like, you know, Garage Band Users and Create, Record, Release and Song Spark and those sort of things. I think what's really cool about the album too, and you've inspired me to make a decision with my album, because my album's taken like eight years to put together so far, but that's, you know, because it's so large and everything. And, you know, I started doing it on iOS back when you couldn't do it on iOS and I used to have to jailbreak <laughs> to do it. Um, but I think what I really loved how you've, been dropping the songs in these groups so when the album dropped last week and i listened to it everything was really familiar but it all still felt new it's like i'd heard all the songs apart from two i think but it all felt extremely familiar and it was it was much easier to fall into the an album because you know when you hear an album that you haven't heard the songs you've got to fall into it and get decide if you like it or not and some yeah, albums yeah. grow on you but i think that was really interesting how you've dropped those over this long period of time and it just felt mm. like a warm hug and i <laughs> oh that's lovely i think um, i think that's the beauty of <laughs> yeah, with blood. a bloody warm, a warm hug, hug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's but that's the incidentally that's the title of my next album. No, <laughs> no. <you're not. laughs> um, that's the beauty of videos, I suppose, is that um, you kind of put a video out with each song, and um, it just kind of sits there in the background, and um, and then by the time you compile the album, it's kind of yeah, you're, you're right, it becomes sort of slightly familiar, and it's hopefully at a point where people are kind of hanging out for the um, for the songs to come out, so. Um, yeah, that's it's uh, it's cool being able to sort of just release it progressively rather than spring it on people. Uh, you know, here's my album sort of thing, and then having people unsure whether they want it or not. At least you can kind of, you know, it's a slow build, tension and release. Yeah, because you didn't actually release um, the singles, uh, like did you? A couple of a couple them of I did. Yeah. Um, so I, I released Lockdown. I think I released 1665 and Roll with Me as well. Um, so I generally try and pick three that have had a good response as I've created because, of course, they're, they're not part of an album until I've finished the album. Um, so I'll tend to just sort of gauge the response of singles as the, as I put them out and then um, then I'll release those, um, you know, uh, as an actual single uh, and then com compile them on the album. And quite often from the release of the single to... Um, putting it on the album, there's been a few tweaks in either the mix or uh, in the case of um, things like Bruised, I've added a whole verse section to the end of it just to, um, to you know, have a, a nod to people like the Beatles and things like that. So um, so quite often the album versions are slightly different to um, the single versions that come out. Yeah, so that's, that's what I like. I, I, I don't understand the whole releasing... All the tracks from the album are on on iTunes and Spotify, and then releasing the album. I think that's a really clever way how you've done that because, and it's been I think uh, cool too because we we're all a part of this little community here, which is amazing. The Viva La La Revolution of home recording artists Absolutely. over on Create Record Release and the Garage Band Users Group. If you're not a member, there are links to those in the description as well. It's an awesome community. Where you get join now, you get to grow and uh, blossom with other artists, and it's you know we're all about lifting each other up with each other. So that's what's really cool about that. Um, so the album's available now; you can download it on all streaming platforms. Let's jump into some of your apps. Let's do that because that's what this show kind of normally is about. Yeah. Um, what are um, uh, five to ten at your leisure apps that you uh, go to that you, you know, make your life I've easy? Got, yep, I've got eight. Awesome. That's five to ten. Um, the first one, uh, in no particular order, um, <laughs> is um, Chord Analyzer, it's called. I'm going to... And... Um, yeah. It's this is a really cool. Um, uh, there it is. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Um, because again, it helps. Um, like if you if you maybe 
play something that you think um, you're not sure what the chord is, this tells you exactly what the chord is. It's a really cool um, app just to uh, work out what a particular, main, mainly when I'm writing it out, um, if I'm be playing it acoustically later sort of thing, it's nice to know actually what I played. Um, or if you want to find um, a chord that's maybe slightly different but further up the fretboard and things like that, I, I just found find it um, useful from time to time to just kind of have a look at those sort of things. Also for piano as well, I can work out how to play the piano chords because it's got them all written out for me. So that's a really cool one. So that's free and uh, with an it's free. $2.99 unlock for full version, it says here. Yeah, the free version is is um, absolutely perfect for for what I need. Um, I think the paid version has a few other instruments that it um, that it has on there, but um, yeah, um, that's a really cool one. Nice. Um, <laughs> the next one is called Next Chord. Next Chord. You like your apps with the word chord in them. I do, I find that? and I love apps that are free too. I can't. I'm not finding it. Is it one word? Oh, I don't know. Next chord. There it is. It is one word. I hate it when they do that. Oh, I know. There you go. So next chord is, uh, again, this is a free app. So basically what it does is um, it's analysed something like 10,000 or 20,000 songs, um, and it's analysed the pattern of them. So what you do is, um, as you can see there in the, in the screenshot, um, you've got an E and A, and it suggests what the, what the most popular... Um, next chord will be so I, I use this to kind of help me find some um, quirky and unusual chords um, within my my um, chord structures uh, just to get away from the usual G, E minor, C and D nothing wrong with that of course because I do love that but um, uh, yeah so if you um, got your E you got your A and you're not sure what you want for your next chord then um, use next chord and it'll sort of give you some really cool suggestions that um that all fit um, really nicely, so if, that's a pretty cool. If you've got three chords like Willie Nelson under your belt, this is the perfect app for you. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon. Um, we've already touched on Procreate, so um, we probably don't need to um, go back into there, but um, I use Procreate um, to do a lot of the artwork um, uh, that I've created in uh, a few of my videos. Um, it's a paid app. But um, yeah, some really amazing effects, heaps of different brushes, heaps of different um, layers that you can add, and um, yeah, you name it, it's, it's really cool. Plus, it uh, records your brush strokes so you can make your own music video out of it. Yeah, definitely. And um, if you would like to know more about it, I'll, put, I'll remember to put a link up in the description uh, on the videos that I've done on it, so you can check it out on this channel as well. So actually, that probably leads on to the next step, which is Werble. How do I spell that? W-E-R-B-L-E. -E. Interesting name. Werble. There we go. Werble. So Werble is a, it's an app that allows you to animate photos. Um, so you can put on um, a set of wings and they'll, they'll move or the bubbles will float or the smoke. So... In a lot of the um, videos that I've done where I've had a bit of smoke or um, some sparks or some flames, um, it's all done using the Werbel app. Um, and so this is what I use when it comes to green screen. So I create a green, uh, just a basic green picture. Um, I used to do that in, um, in Procreate. And I import that into Werbel. And then what I do is add in... Um, whatever effect I want, whether it's a fire effect and kind of you have to, it's a bit of jiggery pokery to try and get it lined up for the video that you need. But um, you, it's, a, it's a really cool way to actually add green screen effects without having a green screen. Um, so I kind of use it in, a, in an unconventional way, I suppose, because I'm using it with an end video in mind rather than just animating a photo. Um, and I'm not sure if this is free. I think you can some aspects of it are free, and then you can pay to remove the watermark, um, and you can buy certain packs like um, flame effects and smoke effects and light effects and all that sort of stuff. But um, super powerful and definitely worth getting. Yeah, it's weird. It says it's so it's free to download, but it says um, 
in that purchase when i click on it it says weather blossoms apocalypse so a whole bunch of things with zero price mm. so i'm guessing that's oh you do, you, yeah some of the packs are free yeah, yeah so, so best to download it and say and i'm so glad you're pointing all these out i haven't heard of most of these apart from procreate so these are some things i'm going to download and look at myself yeah, so but- uh, you know, you'll love Webble. It's um, and again, if you just want a video that's just a photo that's animated with some some clouds rolling or some uh, ocean or smoke, whatever you want, then um, it's a simple way to put something um, onto a video where um, you know attach your music to it, create a video out of a few simple photographs, and um, yeah, you, you've got yourself a video. So really simple. Awesome. Uh, Logic Remote is my next yes. one. Let me bring this I sucker up. I cannot do without Logic Remote. Now that's free as well, and it doesn't doesn't work until you connect it to your iMac. Um, so don't expect that you'll be able to jump in and get working. But it works with Mainstage, it works with Gar- Gar- GarageBand, and it works with um, Logic Pro. Um, and you basically um, can just use that's what i use quite a bit as well you've got the sliders as well as um that there with the key the virtual keyboard um it's it's just such a cool way to um well for me to actually use a keyboard without actually owning a keyboard right so that's how you're uh connecting your um ipad to your your mac yeah Mm. and and yeah i've just got a um, usb to yeah yeah so that's and then the keyboard pops up on the screen that's my keyboard so um yeah really easy yeah and this thing's free isn't it yeah absolutely free yeah it's free yep absolutely free yeah and and it works brilliantly um once you get it all all synced up so um yeah definitely go for that if you've got a uh if you've got a mac or a macbook and you want to connect your ipad and use it as a as a virtual sort of desktop so to speak um it really adds a heap of flexibility to your recording process I'm definitely going to be downloading that very soon because I've just purchased my first Mac. <laughs> I can't wait. Welcome to the light side. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's an M1, so we'll see how we go. It's a Mac Mini, but it's exciting, I think. I'll be following that journey intently because I'm, I've got my eye on one as well. So. Yeah, I'm just I, I, my expectations are low. I'm keeping them low, so I'm surprised. Because I know it's going to be better than what I think. And, and you know, you can't follow too many videos and take people's opinions because everyone's got an opinion. I've watched a whole bunch. I actually uh, deleted one of my subscriptions last night um, who's a really big YouTuber. And I just got sick of his uh, videos always being negative about Apple. And he's a big tech right. um, guy, Linus. Uh, just... I just got sick of him always bagging Apple and crying. So I just was like, you know what? I'm going to unsubscribe <laughs> for you for a while. Just take a break. Yeah, take I'll a go breather. back and we'll, we'll see once the Macs are actually released and he's got one in his hands, then yeah. I'll get his opinion, you know, because he's got a nice. strong opinion. He doesn't even own one. Anything else? Oh, anything's got to be better than a 2011 Mac. Oh, yeah, for I've sure. Got, <laughs> <laughs> I've got three more. Um... Uh, music memos of course is, um, is where the song creation process begins um can't live without this app can't live without it um the cool thing is it gives you um once you've hummed into <laughs> your phone um uh, it gives you the chords that that um, you've used and I, I often um, I'll then once I've kind of got a song written I'll play it into music memos um, just with a simple acoustic guitar um, and then play it in my car over and over again so that I can kind of start thinking about what else I might like to add to it and things like that so I use it for my almost my demo tracks as well um, uh, which is really cool uh, but yeah yeah, I, Absolutely. I, I recorded my whole yeah. Methius, uh beginnings of this. I would go for a walk and just go ba boom ba boom ba boom ba boom ba boom into it while I was walking. Yep. And then come home, it was putting my ba boom ba bombs into notes. I picked up my bass and then played along with it, and then added drums in the in the actual app, transferred it all over to GarageBand, and then just started building on there. If you don't own this app, you're bonkers get it it, it, yep. it will, it will yep. change your songwriting it's an incredible app it will harness your mabomba bombs <laughs> 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 uh 
Um, another app was uh, is one that um, Mike Holmes um, from the Garage Band uh, group put me onto, and it's called Dolby On. Yeah, Thomas Galane put me onto this. I think I saw him early in the the chat. Uh, it's Dolby On, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. I haven't got to he, I haven't got to look at it, but yeah, this thing's yeah, it's really cool. So um, it just I, I don't know what it does. It just does something to the sound. So you can use it as um, a live streaming app as well. So um, you can um, yeah, just set it up and it just makes everything sound cool and <laughs> and uh, less tinny. And you know, if you're just recording with your um, iPhone and it's just you and an acoustic guitar, for example, then it'll just um, make the sound um, much more rounder and fuller. And um, yeah, it's just a really cool, uh, cool app. And again, it's free. Yep, sure I believe. Is. Yep. Um, my favourite price. And <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, just great if you if you want to record a video or um, or even just a straight audio track. But it, it does do have the live streaming capability, which is um, quite useful as well. Yeah, so the description here says, Dolby On is the only free audio recorder and sound editor for voice, music, video, and, and more with cutting-edge Dolby audio technology. So I guess they own the copyright to that, so you're only ever going to get Dolby from this app. And yeah, I've, I've had a number of people. I saw Mike Holmes, as you mentioned. He uh, did a demo with it. Thomas Galane got me onto it. I'm definitely going to have a look at it in one of my shows so we'll, we'll get around to that that's cool um and the last um app i've got is one called bebot b-e-b-o-t um, now bebot is a bit of a guilty pleasure <laughs> uh, so uh, so i've got my ipad here this is a kind of a theremin oh wow what? Now it also um, so it's got heaps of different sounds. Oh, excuse you. <laughs> um, That's nice. Now, now I've seen um, there's a guitarist called Phil X who um, he's actually the guitarist currently for uh, John Bon Jovi, but he he's done a few uh, stuff on YouTube where he's used the Bebop app and um, held it up against the pickups of his guitar and played it through his guitar, through his amp, with some you know extra distortion and stuff like that, and it just sounds amazing. So, um, <laughs> yep, that's, <laughs> that's cool, <laughs> the Bebop app is just really, it's just a fun thing, but, um, but definitely uh, worth a try if you're looking for maybe an experimental sound or a theremin sound or anything like that, um, then, yeah, you've got this uh, this cool wee uh, robot that makes all these cool sounds. You've convinced me. I've just bought it. <laughs> <laughs> so that is mine now. <laughs> awesome. awesome. That's such a cool app. That's just really cool. But, yeah, in a live sense, uh, you know, if you want some ambient just noise coming through your guitar or your guitar amp, you just hold it up to the pickups on your guitar, crank the volume on your phone and play it through your guitar. It's really, it's a cool, um, yeah, just a cool wee um, useful app. There's a theremin app that's uh, free on the App Store at the moment. I think it's um, part of the whole Black Friday deals. I got it, oh, I got yeah. it the other day, but it only runs on iOS 14, I think. So I don't have it on my iPad here. But I, was, I had such high hopes, you know. I'm like, a free, that's that's oh. cool. But it, it doesn't sound anywhere near as cool as what that sounded. So um, uh, It's got some... Uh, plus, you can also add uh, a bunch of effects as well. You can add echo, overdrive. There's a chorus... Uh, attached to it as well, so you can you can really customize it to um, to whatever you like. Um, you can set it to a particular scale as well if you just want it to play notes wow. within a scale. Um, it's yeah, it's you know synth harps and um, loopers and all sorts in there, it filters, you name it. It's it just has the coolest thing. You'll you'll start playing with it this afternoon, and that'll be you for the rest of the day. <laughs> 
Well, thank you for all those suggestions and those things that get you by with music. So we are cool. at the virtual end of the show and it always goes long. So thank you for spending all this time with me. I know you're, you've got kids to look after and all that stuff. So I'm um, parenting, parenting. I put them on devices. So that's cool. <laughs> Thanks, Apple. Parenting for the word. <laughs> exactly right. Um, yeah. So... Uh, all of the links and everything uh, to all of your music, your social media, it's all in the description. So I won't make you try and rattle off all that stuff because it can be a bit annoying to rattle it off. It all is definitely there. I've, I've tried to get everything I possibly can and more. So <laughs> make sure you go and uh, download Glenn's music, check out all his videos, subscribe to his YouTube channel and buy a physical CD. Do it, man! Do it! I'm compelling you to. The power of Christ compels you. <laughs> oh God, where am I going with that shit? Um, <laughs> it's that warm, bloody hug that has done it for yeah, me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Nothing beats a warm, bloody hug. So we're going to wrap up today with um, one of your songs. Uh, so one more song. But I need to ask you this question. So uh, I ask everybody it. So when do you think, Glenn, is the best time for somebody to start creating? Uh, after the kids are asleep, <laughs> that's the best time. Or when you're having a shower. Um, but but really, there, there's there's no time that's not a, a moment that you you can't create. I mean, um, on on the on the commute to work, um, sometimes at work, so, you know, wake up in the middle of the night. There's there's no time that's a bad time for creation um, because when you've got apps like your Music Memos app, even if, if your creation is only five minutes of you singing into a phone, that's the start of something uh, wonderful. So, uh, yep, no time is a bad time, but, um, yeah. Excellent. Correct answer. <laughs> I, I, I like the putting the kids to bed. And I like the shower, too. You know, well, let's just on that. I just want to say quickly before we do go. So... I love uh, in the shower too. There's a resonance with the water sometimes. I think that, uh, and I was I was talking to Riley on Friday, and we'll, uh, I mentioned this. I've been reading this study about um, how in the shower people are compelled to sing, and there's been all these studies mm. about the resonance in the water that create actual rhythms in our hearing that induce us to that's sing cool. i think it's really interesting that um how awesome is that that's cool yeah because you know it's it's a, it's a thing that we've all grown up with singing in the shower you know mm. and now there seems exactly. to be some kind of scientific thing behind it actually it's there you yeah, go i love that there, shit. there could be an album within you just don't stay in the shower too long <laughs> and become like your teacher's hands <laughs> <I love that. laughs> all right so we'll go out today um Thank you very much also for coming on the show. Been thank you, wanting it for yeah, such a really long time. It. Uh, thank you for creating such great music, being so inspirational, so and answering all my weird questions. And for being extremely entertaining and funny as well and giving me a laugh too. I expected that and got it in spades. <laughs> so thank you. Yay. Oh, that, uh, Jade, it's been an awesome... Um, I've been looking forward to being on the show for such a long time. And the fact that I don't normally use iOS to create my music, I was like, how can I get onto Jade's show because I use a Mac? So but we found a way. But, um, yeah, I really appreciate uh, all your support and uh, along with, you know, uh, Pete Johns and, and the, the groups that we mentioned earlier, Garage Band users, Create, Record, Release, Song Spark, all those people who uh, yeah, just uh, just really um, make our lives amazing as um, recording artists and provide us with feedback and um, you know your, your encouragement and that is just amazing. So thank you so much for um, having me on. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you and here here and thanks to you guys in the chat. You know if it wasn't for you guys yeah. coming over here and supporting all these great artists, supporting my channel, I, I love you all, you guys so much. You, you make me happy every day to see all your faces and to see you creating as well. So let's go out. We're going to play Killing Time from the album. We're going to get some shovel action going on. On. Ooh, a, yeah, a bit of shovel action <laughs> gonna get digging down and dirty so uh, ladies and gentlemen this is killing time from the album go and get it now and get all the rest of the albums and um we'll see you again on, on tomorrow's show i guess all good so thank you glenn thank you everybody enjoy the tune cheers see you later thanks bye, bye.
killing time on a perfect day. I'm just thinking of you and the scratches on your face. One last thing to see to to be together from today. Killing time on a perfect day. It's been a hard time working my fingers through the pain. Though I'm tired and dirty, at least I know you're safe. Killing time on a perfect day, smothering the embers of a long neglected flame. There's a storm approaching. Will it wash my sins away? Feel my guilt embrace me Like the twist of a tourniquet Just say that you were with me And I will say the same Yeah.